Hello everybody, welcome to a brand new Let's Play series in Hearts of Fire 4. Today we're going to be playing in the Red Flood mod over here as Fume. Uh, we do start off in an alliance with the French. And our goal is to at least conquer the rest of Italy, which I think we should be able to do. Um, I know the folks tree looks pretty small right now, but this will eventually kind of fill out. Um, I did do kind of a test run to make sure everything's going to be working out uh, properly. So we have five units. They're actually pretty high experience as well. What are you? You're you're not great, to be quite honest. Uh, you're only eight combat with, but that's fine for now. We have four factories, zero military, zero naval dockyards, and two civilian factories. So the economy is horrible. Just really, really, really bad. Uh, let's just go for all of our basic uh, researches here. So, France is over here. Um, eventually, we're probably going to go to war with um, Germany as well. But Italy, I think, is going to be our main focus for now. How long until we actually go to war with them? I'm not too, too sure. Probably, because I, I know at some point we're going to get an, uh, an event to kind of build up some military power in the future. We're getting some political power here. More political power. We're going to remove the slump. What is the slump actually doing for us? It is uh, bad. 30% consumer factory, negative 10% construction speed, and negative 10% research speed. All of those, I would say, are horrible. Um, I mean, 30%, I guess, actually isn't that, that bad, considering the fact we only have four factories. Because even if we remove the slump, I think we get one factory back. I guess that is like a 50% increase. But either way, a charming guest. Today, a charming pianist, Louise Baccara, arrived in her splendid city abroad. The luxury liner Cote Verde, which runs constantly between Italy, Fume, and the Far East. Arrival is like a breath of, of the fresh spring wind in the middle of a gloomy winter, and it's clear evidence that the city is expecting a, a new season of wonderful and impressive things. The star is met by her old cavalier, Il Vata himself. All this caused a wave of patriotic feelings and unprecedented excitement in the city. Even those who are not interested in, who are not interested in music want to see our Louise again. The Lebanon Carnival in Fume erupts as if someone had thrown dynamite into an ammunition depot. Uh, Anuzio could not leave the goddess of music without a suitable gift, and immediately upon arrival, the pianist received an extraordinary present, a piano made entirely of mother of pearl and ivory, as pure and beautiful as Mui de, de Fume. Makara will stay in the city for a month, it'll be a magical month, both for residents and for many journalists. We're always looking for new scandalous materials for their foreign tabloids. United is the art. So we do have some decisions here. We get stability plus 1% uh, for a little bit of political power drainage. And research be going down for a little bit. Um, of course we have some popularity for our party as well as more war support in exchange for some manpower. Which I don't have any of so I don't know how we're going to do this to be quite honest but that's fine. This is a very long... It's actually so long that it doesn't even fit on the screen. Antigone. The spectator sits motionless like a quiet evening sea, holding her breath, and only the silent whispers like splashes break the silence of the palace of music. All attention is drawn to the stage and the looks, enthusiastic and lustful, waiting and interested, are mixed with the light of dozens of spotlights, and everything around is bathed in glow, uh, golden fire. After all, where she appears, there's only light and beauty and unforgettable greatness of music. The most beloved star of the constellation of the City of Light, Leiter Amete of Dianzio Bacara, is in fume again. This is how all the posters in the newspaper shout and the radio waves sing the hosannas of her skill and talent. Carnio's favorite qualities, they say a lot, but, this, but to say that is one thing, to see and hear it is different. Philippe Petirdo never liked the music so much, so much, so even before the concert, he was more interested in the brand new felt suit, not only crumpled by the crowd. After all, it was quite a lot of money and he didn't spend it so that someone would spit or cough on his jacket now. Therefore, he had no idea what would be dealing with when the pianist's miniature hands touched the piano keys and a wave of music swept through the hall. He never heard such a thing. Philippe participates in a choir of the cooperation, as well as almost everyone, but it's a completely different. Here to the unseen feeling, it was as if some nymph of music had invisibly hugged his shoulders and was whispering something softly into his ear. Philippe felt a lump in his throat. A small sun that was rising, rising, and suddenly tears came out of his eyes. And he had difficulty breathing. It's such a new feeling that he coughs, but no one pays attention to it. Everyone is too absorbed in the music of sound. Someone hands him a handkerchief, and someone smiles gratefully at the old-fashioned gentleman in the glasses. 
But the performance goes on naturally, and now the scene is changing. Philippe did not notice when it happened, but now the light of the music folks, the kinetic ballerinas dancing, and men and women of antique togas and dresses singing their arias. He does not remember the name of this play or opera. He lost the program, but listens carefully as if his life depended on it. The music goes on so well uh, with all this. In turn, the nymph smiles at him and leads on. Here, when the city is saved from enemies, the piano plays joyfully and impressively. Here, when a girl heroine finds the body of her brother in a hostile attire, it plays with sad sol solemnity. Here, the strict grandfather king denies her the right to bury her brother, and the musical accompaniment begins to cut like glass through the heart. Here, she steals her brother's body that night, and Philippe feels anxious, as if he th is there himself in the dim light of the stage, dancing to the music. Here she is caught in a stern king passing his sentence, and with and with it reaches the culmination of the play, and the listeners can't stand. Hey old stump, leave her alone, someone shouts, and others support him with laughter, shouts, and revi uh, revealed applause. Everyone seems to have forgotten that they are watching a play. The old king did not raise an eyebrow, but wave to the hospitalites, who dive into the crowd to bring the daredevils to the stage. Of course, neither Philippe nor several thousand spectators are intimidated by this, but thunderous roar, human waves splash onto the stage and spins everything. The actors themselves, laughter, screaming. Philippe with a chair in his hand and an old-fashioned gentleman in the glasses, piano, and Louise, hoplites and ballerinas, dancing in sound. All are becoming one huge futuristic whirlwind of harmony. A thousand planets are dancing around one piano, like a parade of stars. They will carry Bakara in their arms all the way to the hotel. I need to click the button though. Ah! The power of music. Maybe some like some formatting in, in that would be a little bit, you know, appreciated. Or making it like two separate events, like part one, part two. It's just a giant block of text that covers from top to bottom of the screen. We are missing production. We're not making... We know... We know... Uh, factories. So obviously we can't do too much, at least at the moment, as unfortunate as that is. Um, World Touch needs to be at 25% for us to actually justify any wars, which even not, we're not going to do necessarily. We're going to get 80 political power here, which allows us to do some stuff. The Socialists have taken Madagascar. Okay. So I think they've kicked out the French, because France still has a little bit of territory in Madagascar, just in, like, a port. Avant-garde France, you're collaborating with Escadaron. We don't know what the British are doing, we don't know what the Italians are doing, we don't know what Germany's doing. Because right now, we are in the Ligue Solaire, uh, with, I think, just France. France and, uh, the Caribbean Futurists, okay. Beside us, we had the Third International with Germany, Hungary, as well as Brazil. The Commonwealth of Nations, led by the British, of course, are like the entirety of the old British Empire. And people are just declared war in Japan. That is all fine and good. The Spectacle of Destruction. Barnita lit a cigarette and took a deep breath. The Father of Futurism, the Steel Duce of an Electric Future, stands alone on the bell tower of St. Vitus Cathedral. Extravagant and colorful as always, a banana bird jacket, cheek checker trousers. He nevertheless still looks just like just another shadow against a solemn twilight landscape of fume, dotted with carnival lights, distant songs, and, and strings of lanterns in the street below. In the dim light of Karyos, the <laughs> kerosene lamp, he resembles a metal statue that froze at the edge of the tower, examining his territories from a height, and only the lit of a cigarette betrays a living uh, person in the statue. The Father of Futurism watches at the Palace of Music and silently marvels at its beauty behind deceptive classic contours Eyes a truly futuristic spirit. Uh, Gaikumo tries his best to paint the, uh, by painting the interior here and there by filling the leaks out, creating a strange range of effect that shocks Renty so much. It's violence against art. How can it is possible? And it will be. The muse of culture needs a good beating. We will saddle it. We will race into the future with the power of true futuristic machato, um, <laughs> shimo, and rudeness. Somewhere far away in the port, a light flickers and the sound of orchestras are heard. Few accompanies Louise Bacara in in her departure. The famous pianist leaves again in her magic with her magical prince, who is increasingly locked in an enchanting world in his palace, among roses, banners, and chocolate. Marinita puts out his cigarette. He felt a little sorry for Gabrielle, who was too weak, too soft during the romantic subline lying on the bed of fume peace. A fume in peace. But it proves the both a choice of music and his choice of women. For all their conservatism, this pianist is endowed with a truly futuristic spirit. And her departure should be marked by a real futuristic spectacle. Is everything ready, Umberto? Umberto Bicconi, 
biting a cigarette, holding a bulky phone in his lap, nodded. Yes, we are ready, Angelo. Uh, um, Angelo has already taken off. Good. At this very moment, the palace of music was ignited by hundreds of searchlights. A bright mechanical construct, a motor in the sky. Light shimmers on the surface as if it was not a simple building, but a structure made of pure diamonds. High above the luxury roof, a color plane hovers in the sky. It glows like a lantern and then almost clings to the roof. Then it takes off under the clouds, the child of the future ready to leap forward. He burns a desire to act like a young spirit of the futurist, bound by spectacle and beauty, charming but frozen like the palace. Three, two, one, let's go. With a thunderous roar, the palace of music shudders as if from a heartbeat and begins to slowly settle, collapsing as if as it in on itself. Another explosion, and it turns into a bright ball of fire, splutter flames into the sky, engulfs a small defensive plane just to make the machine fly out of the hell a second later. As bright and shiny as before. Now all the searchlights are aimed at the sky, at the plane, which leaves behind the smoky ruins and accelerates into the night sky. The time for final acceleration is near. Yes, I know we're still missing the production equipment. I know we don't have any manpower. We can't do anything about that right now. At least until I get some political power. But we could go straight to limited conscription. Or straight to like... I mean, this partialization, I guess it makes our factories build a lot better, so we might actually want to go straight for that. Uh, Ardito and Carbonera. Conte Verde sways gracefully and smoothly on the winds of the Gulf of Venice, surrounded by a lace of soldiers hanging over it. Workers unloading tons of luggage and a colorful set of passengers who almost solemnly step onto the ancient promenade of the cruise ship of Venice. The Pearl of the Adriatic welcomes another batch of tourists, greedy for everything new and unusual. Uh, Galafino glared at the liner from his conventional place in the middle of the mountain of luggage. Until the workers arrive, it's possible to relax a little. It is unlikely that anyone will try to steal the suitcase of the Muse Fume in the port, especially when he is nearby. The liners in general, the Conte Verde in particular, have always fascinated uh, Galafino with the machines, with machine perfection and grace. This is the most perfect of all types of ships, more complex than even the military cruisers, but much, much more beautiful. Every ship has... Was always associated, he's always associated the one with the woman he met once on a way of life. This liner was clearly like Biana of Triest. Small and calm, but so sweet and with such beautiful green eyes. Maybe someday when the commander conquer Italy, he will return to Bianca and will and will design ocean liners. Large, white, multi-tube? But for now, hello weapons. A rough scream clearly in his direction brings young Ardito from the dreamy half-sleep. A suspicious group of people, several strong guys in plain clothes and a man... In cabaret uniform, shouting something and quickly approaching. Just in case, Afino hid his Arditi blade in a sleeve. It is a pity that Paolo is not around. The Calabrini limped a little, uh, as if he had once been kissed by the war, but struck the Ardito with a rage unbelievable for such a height. He waved his folder frantically and gestured ruly. Hey you, kid. Yes, you. Give me here the documents of the cargo. What do you say here? It has already been examined. But my documents, another round of dancing with the folder, says no. I have an order from the uh, from the prefect to give me give me the documents here. Or I'll re requisition the contraband. What? I don't care uh, who who um, who's is those luggage. It is smuggling, and I take away everything. You don't have documents. No, I no need to call anyone. I already understood everything, guys. We requisition it all. Hey, step back, he. Gafino grabbed the cardinal's hand, stopping his ballet of papers. Nobody will take anything. The uh, financial guard will come and judge us. Cabernero blushed, pulling his hand out of a grip. Oh, you son of a bitch. Guys, take the officer's eyes there blankly at the hilt of the blade, which is suddenly st stuck in out of his chest in the next moment. With the same disbelieving look, he collapsed back like a puppet with trimmed strings. The young man froze, clearly not expecting such a development, and Golfino raised his hand cautiously. Adrenaline pounded in his blood like steel hammers. Don't interfere. Before he could finish, a loud ba 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 sound and a steel painter casually slapped three spot red spots in Delfino's uniform. Ardito turned pale and cold, fell cold onto the pavement. He saw time to hear the stamping of feet, the screams, the sounds of glowing disturbances before the darkness absorbed his sensations. Gets event incident in Venice. So our first focus is almost finished. Luis's departure was overshadowed by a shameful incident in the port of Venice. It is not known why, whether it was another halt and confusion, or an inert bureaucratic machine of the Italian state, or due to someone's malicious intent, an annoying misunderstanding between the es escort of Rididi, designed to guard the pianist's luggage, and the Carreni, 
turned into bloodshed and skirmish. Passengers and visitors coming out of Crossfire panic and created even more chaos and crowding. Now that the Venetian authorities will not only have to deal with the rep uh, reputation and human losses, not only to endure a storm in the press, but also try to appease the ruler of Fume. Our people's blood is not for sale or demand a formal... Our people's blood is not for sale. I don't know if that's the right choice. To war with Italy. Maybe. I don't know if we could e even afford a war. Just yes, yes, yes. Citizens, iron head to fume. Today we receive terrible news and it fills my heart with grief and my eyes with tears. Our brave falcons, our lifelong young heroes became victims. Vi victims of a cemented, sleepy, rotten, rusty vehicle. This vehicle is called the Kingdom of Italy. Our beloved homeland, to which we are so long to return, continues to suffer under the oppression of capitalism, corruption, and demagoguery. Now this abomination has killed our children, our martyrs of the spirit. This is not just a crime, it is not just murder, it's an act of aggression. An act of open and unbridged aggression. This is another crime and a series of crimes. Another step in this crusade against beauty, against all the light and pure in this world. This march will continue as long as Fume exists, as long as it carries its torch to the darkness, as long as it heralds the beginning of a new world. Do you hear that sound? Distant noise of airplane propellers. Now this is how angels cry. On this day, everyone is in sorrow. Even our magnificent uh, nature is painfully affected by this blow. Do you hear this pain? Do you feel this anger, citizens? Chorus of distant voices. And I feel it too. Have I not been with you all these years in sorrow and joy? Was I not your heart and soul? Chorus of approving voices. I promise you that the sacrifice will not be in vain. Our children will stand next to us on a fiery path of the future. On a path that will lead us to victory. On a path that will lead us to the homeland of heroes. On the path that will lead us to the divine, beautiful world of the future. Then in the blazing rays of the Mediterranean sun and this turquoise breeze of the Adriatic, we will destroy the rusty machine of Italy. We will replace it with a new one. A new one, aesthetic, sacred, and a deep meaning. Are you ready to go with me into this future? Are you ready to put everything onto the altar of total self-immolation with me? Are you ready? Are you ready? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, 30 political power, 1% stability. Which means we could do some of this stuff, but with 192, I think we just want to go straight into partial mobilization. Seems like probably the best option for us at the moment. The 15th Oregno, which is going to give us another 80 political power. We're only in March, by the way. I was not expecting this much uh, pop-ups. For what's going on in Fume. Right now we have Poland over here with their little faction. They're also, um, accelerationist. So we have the same ideology. But we'll see kind of what they do, because I think Poland can go in a handful of different directions. But hopefully they do somewhat align with us in the future. That would be probably the best case scenario. Civil War breaks out in the East. Japan has declared a war in Japan, so the Japanese Civil War has begun. Ah, uh, okay. I need, I need this, thank you. The raid on Rome. Planes cut the turquoise and jade of the sky like a diamond knife. There are five of them. The, the time-worn battle falcons of the Great War. The swift-footed Achilles of the Iliad. Each of them is a unique as their pilot. Each of them has an expression of the free spirit of freedom, the impulse of creativity. Like their pilots, pirate philosophers, poet yogis, artists, scientists, and above all, free and completely free people. Guido Keller is not, uh, would not gather others in his team. Legendary action secretary, the owner of the cheek mustache and Adriatic hair, sat in the lead plane, his favorite ace of hearts. A beautiful Newport painted in all possible shades of orange, red, and yellow. As if, if, as if it were not an airplane, but an angular piece of the sun with a propeller. How beautiful he is, this plane. How beautiful they all are, his young heroes. Browning from the high, hot sun, Keller finished his coffee carefully and set the cup down on a makeshift personal sideboard. Then he adjusted his snow white scarf, looked around at the wards, and shouted out the radio at the top of his voice. The winds drowned out the words, Hey, UFO, gain height, you're lagging. The Adada turned north 300 degrees on sunset. Giovanni, read us poems. Giovanni Camuso, a cheerful and every smiling lover of peaches and sailboats, sang as loud as he could, filling the air with his verses, inspiring unexpected feelings and new interesting emotions. They sail the blue sea of question question heaven, listening to the clear waters of the Adriatic and dive between the clouds like a yacht between the islands of the Malta. Below on the ground, the green squares of meadows and strips of forests 
change the chaotic chessboard of the suburbs as the flying chaos came closer to its gore. goal, the glorious city of Rome. They were waiting for the mission trusted by them by Poet Prophet. Then, before departure, the aviator inspected his team again. They were all celestial and spiritual for Elite of Fume, which despises the petty conventions of the bourgeois society even more than other citizens. One day, they will lead Fume forward like any, like another high-speed plane, but for now, they are flying, dressed only in their impotence and the intense layer of body paintings. Close to the city, their formation uh, disintegrates for a moment, unable to withstand emotions, and a uniform commotion begins. The nightmare of any flight instructor when planes decorated with lotus and roses behave like uh, foals in new meadows, playfully chasing each other and almost crashing into themselves. But everything changes when Ghetto blows into his hunting horn, giving a signal of the colorful machines to stand in line and prepare for an attack. Where does mischief disappear? One by one, the planes dive down like colorful shadows, descending to the level of houses and cathedrals in the Eternal City, and then fall their cargo onto the heads of the crowds that poured onto the streets below. Several tons of flowers fell onto the heads of stunned Romans. This event would flood newspapers for the week. Without uh, encountering resistance, the fighters entered another circle, this time over poor areas where they would look to the sky with fear and disbelief, only to get a pack of chocolate on their heads. Not everyone is so lucky. There is not enough chocolate, although there's They've all been drained of uh, Dialdro's supplies. Uh, Gabriel won't mind. Nevertheless, those who have seen a surreal picture of candies tied up in red ribbons falling from the sky certainly will have something to discuss at home. The final round, this time over the Parliament Building, Keller's plane descends quietly and smoothly, almost landing with the weight of the ex expansive slate. One moment where he had been a donkey stared at the world from the roof of the sad, if sad black eyes, he flew from fume to Rome in an action secretary plane. Leaving behind the commotion, chaos, and general confusion, Fiumin Yogi's return home singing? Well, I don't know why that's a question. Redemption for Venice. Is that what are you talking about? But I think for right now, it's going to be a good time for us to end this episode. So thank you everybody for watching. My name is Anthem. If you enjoyed, my thumbs up. And not Joey Croy, something down. If you want to subscribe, and goodbye.